Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we're going to have another conversation with Stephen Hawking from The Afterlife. Stephen has a playlist here, so if you're interested in hearing more from him, which I think his conversations are fascinating, go ahead and check out the playlist. All right, let's get into the channeling today. I want to have a conversation with Stephen specifically at first about the topic of aliens. And I was inspired to do this because I was feeling kind of the Disney vibes, wearing my alien t-shirt today. And I thought, you know, who can I channel? Who would be interesting to channel? And I thought, Stephen Hawking, let's ask him about aliens. I mean, isn't that just curious? So let's do it. All right, so let's see. Oh, he's right away. He pulls right up to the table. I'm at the kitchen table today in my channeling session. Haven't been here for a while, so it feels good to be, be back here. So he's sitting right across the, the table from me. He says, I was wondering when it would take you, how, how long it would take you to get around to this topic. Yeah, it's a curious topic. Now, there's a couple of different ways to look at this. One is alien as in life form, like scientifically that we can access or connect with. Is there life on other planets? That's one way to look at this. Another way to look at this is from the spiritual context energetically of star seeds or star guide energy, spirit guides as star energies that are um, in different realms or different dimensions. Okay, so complicated stuff, two different kinds of things. Let's focus on the human life experience because I think that will be very, very interesting for many people. So Stephen, Dr. Hawkins, that's how I, <laughs> Hawking, sorry, Hawking, Hawking. Can you tell us, is there life on other planets? He says, Okay, first, the first direct answer that I'm, I feel the infused knowledge is yes. He says, and it depends on what you mean by life. Are you speaking of, of life as in plant life, vegetation, a, a, a biosphere that would be able to sustain human life? Because that's a different question. Oh, interesting. Okay. So uh, there is... Um, some, so there's a couple of different things that are going on current events wise related to, or recent history related to space and space exploration. One is this concept of work, uh, life on Mars and exploring Mars. And then the other is like the um, space program, SpaceX. So maybe we could talk kind of about those two things a little bit. Well, Mars, he says, Mars is believed to be the most obvious choice for potential as far as other planets and the possibility for sustaining life upon the planet. Whether or not there is currently life on Mars, as in what you would expect as a, a person or a humanoid type of life, the answer to that question has already been confirmed and studied by scientists. And now there is a, a deeper desire to explore, a deeper need to explore the context of that planet as in what it has to offer as far as like minerals, as far as um, scientific um, discoveries, as in how is it like Earth and how is it different than Earth? And are there different... Um, you can tell based upon the soil, based upon the, the terrain, based upon different things within the soil, you can see the layers of how, not only how the planet was formed, but how it can sustain or it has sustained life. Because the question more becomes, has there been life here? Is there a history? What is the history of it? In order to understand if it then in the future could sustain um, human exploration. So um, if humans could colonize it or humans could um, um, simply go there for scientific um, experiences and actually have a, a pod there where they could live. Now, I mean, Mars in and of itself provides many obstacles or challenges initially, yet these barriers could be overcome be, because there are many scientific advancements that can 
um, things that you think with your human mind, with your mind, that are challenges and make it in un not survivable, really is not the case when it comes to the depth and the level of um, scientific discovery that has occurred. That that is not all available to the public. That that you don't know or are not aware of. It's not just like an invention like Tang. <laughs> it's, it's not like that. It, it, it's not all of the scientific discoveries that have been made are not things that have been shared. Okay, so that's an interesting concept. So let's talk about that. Why not? Like, why don't we know about some of these other things? Well, quite frankly, you wouldn't be interested. It would be uninteresting to you. Things that would be exciting for us, for those of us who studied this type of thing, find it fascinating and exciting, but, but for the most part, the majority of people, it, it won't affect your day-to-day -day life. And, and people in the human mindset, mind frame, don't really seem to care unless it directly relates. And so there are a lot of scientific, a lot of progress that has been made scientifically that hasn't been shared with the public, not because it's being withheld on purpose or some nefarious reasoning, but because it's, it's a part of a, a growing library of information. Because when you study something, you can find breakthroughs in other areas based upon the chain of um, or patterns of, of how that particular thing that you're studying is uh, what it reveals. It might become medicine. It might become um, um, something that can, can help support some kind of a progression or progressive um, um, so, uh, research that's being done. And it can cross multiple different types of scientific study. And so it, it's hard to explain uh, in general terms how important these things are, but it's not because it's a big secret. It's just, it's just because quite frankly, it would not be that interesting. In, in, and, and in and of itself, the individual things that have been learned and, and the, the opportunity that there is to, to then develop something like your example of Mars, to, to be able to sustain life there, um, um, a certain suit, a certain type of equipment, a certain um, um, sphere that can really manage temperature and, and, and monitor um, oxygen levels and different things like that. It, it, it's like a natural next step because all the components are here. So, so the, the science is available. It is available and it's available here, like in this library. And then at the time that it is needed, it will be developed and merged into something that is more tangible that you would you know, see and that you, more practical, more practical. Ah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so it's not like this big conspiracy or anything. No, he says, <laughs> he says, no, um, maybe. He says, well, maybe us scientists, we're pretty mysterious, you know, we're pretty mysterious. <laughs> we're not the reclusive bunch that we have been um, um, created to be or that we've been um, presented to be, you know, in movies and in, um, in, in common talk and such, you know, in the culture. We're not, we're not the reclusive bunch that, that you might uh, think or that we appear to be, no. We're quite, we're quite a bit more interesting than that. <laughs> we're more social. Also, we are much more social <laughs> as well. Okay, great. Okay, okay. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about life on other planets. So, so this concept um, of aliens, let's talk about specifically aliens. So, so uh, aside from the sci-fi movies that we've you know watched or the conspiracy theories that we've heard about um, are there aliens and do they visit or do they observe or have they been in earth space so are there aliens he says well yes yes we even use the term in our language we even use the term alien in our language, don't we? That's alien to me, foreign, different, stands out, an oddity, something not like the others, it's alien. And we even use it in our governing practices, don't we? And especially in the United States. We use it as a separate thing. We use it as something that is going to take something away from us or something that is different or should be banished. There are so many different, so many different levels of the meaning of alien, isn't there? So something foreign that is not from this planet, exploring 
this planet or, or being curious about us, yes, there have been sightings of what you would consider alien or not of this planet societies or um he says people isn't the right way to describe it because it's not people is a human term that's connected and associated and understood on earth it's not something that we would just project onto another culture species we wouldn't call um, different types of, of species that we discover as far as plants or animals etc we wouldn't call those human but we would say they have life so too then with an alien culture or civilization we would call them alien because we don't have an extraterrestrial might be a better term um, different than um, what we are perceived but uh, um, it's labeling it's just labels it's just semantics okay all right so ets um i don't even know what to call them because i feel like alien is a triggering term et is a triggering term why don't we call them um, observers or visitors? That's more likely, he says. They're much more observationist than they are um, intentionally um, um, wanting to interfere. They, they are not, for the most part, from the experiences that have been noted and documented, um, they are not wanting necessarily to come in and interfere. So we're not just like a big experiment. Well. The experiment is already happening. You have to understand the study of human humankind is already happening. It's more about the culture and the behaviors. It's about the patterns in society. It's about that, not as much about the physical biology or makeup of the person. It's more of the physiology or makeup of the planet itself. And those studies, those samples have been done. So when we experience these um, observations, observationist from other planets, other galaxies, they may perhaps be coming to take more samples of the planet. And at the same time, there are human beings that through their psychic connection and awareness have been linked or have this desire to be linked to these other places, planets. Now, prior to my death, I would not have have taken a, any kind of um, um, scientific stand on this or any kind of um, a public viewpoint on this. And given the perspective I have now, I can assure you that there is psychic connection between human beings and the observers, the ones who observe. And at the same time, there are different types of human beings. There are different types of observers and different types of, of, of cultures, of um, intentions, yes. But not to be fear, not to, not to promote fear. It's not fear mongering. It's, not, it's really not as, as fearful as you may believe or understand it to be. It is very disconcerting and confusing for people who are humans and their human experience who have the connection to these other planets and then to these other societies, which you would say are, are these ETs or observers, we'll call them the observers, have, have connection. There's connection already there. And then the conscious mind though, is not able to access the understanding of that connection. There's no memory of that connection, formal memory. And so there's this confusion and this, this fear naturally in a human experience that there's this abduction or there's this, I'm taking you against your will because will is of the mind, the ego mind that is not transcendent or does not have the capacity to access this accelerated ascended mind, which is the oneness, the one mind, which has access to all of the information for all of what would be an individual person or the collective one. And because of that, there is this fear and this, this very human instinct, this animal instinct that I'm being taken or I'm I'm having this experience and many would report that there was this traumatic experience and uh, not to speak down about that, your individual or personal experiences are your own and, and everyone has a right to process in their own, their own way through the feeling of these things, which is 
a really an illusion of the mind, but truly the mind is manipulating the emotion so that there is this separation between the human and the ET, the human and this other culture civilization, the human and these observers, because there can't possibly be an acceptance globally, collectively, that there is these other planets, there's these other potential realms of reality that are happening and coinciding and coexisting along with the earth and that is too big of information to be able to be palatable or accepted by a small mind, which we are. We are like small minded. We are. As a human body, we are because that has to be the case. That is how this particular mainframe can operate. It is not on the advanced innovative, the human body has not transcended that. And then too, the mind has not transcended. So, so if anything's out of date, it's not our science, it's our minds. It's our brain and the capacity of our brain to process. And you can see this based upon the, the deterioration of the mind and the aging process, the, the um, disconnect there in regards to the feelings and the emotions that come up when someone has something like an Alzheimer's or a dementia. You can see this, it's a rotting away of the mind. Therefore, the mind does not have the power or capacity to collectively then bring in this understanding that there are alien life forms, there are different planets that are coexisting in alternate realities or in multiple universes, solar systems, or the, the cosmos, what you would consider the cosmos. And it's just too big. It, it, quite frankly, it is too big. It's not just mind blowing. It would just, there would not be the ability then to continue about this human life on this plane because you would not want to just be here. Do you see? Do you see? So, so psychically, there is a connection and an understanding and a relationship between the person the being, and, and it's, not, it's not the person, the, the mind and the heart um, bringing in the feelings, the emotion, the mind and the emotional, the centers. It is really the energy being of you that is talked about in modern healing um, techniques and modern healing and, and, and um, spiritual development context. It, that is true. There is this being of light that you are or this being of energy or this light body. There are lots of different words to describe it, but there is that. And that part is very, really, very, in a very real way connected in relationship to these other planets these other cultures, if you think about them as a culture, another culture, um, having an affinity for another culture, a connection for another culture is often explained as potentially a past life connection or experience or a, a memory from um, lineage lines being passed down even if it's multiple generations and haven't been to that place um, um, for multiple generations and you're very disconnected from that culture that you have in your linea your, your family lines, your generational lines. It's much like that, but there's not a conscious memory of it. There's a lot like this um, mental memory of it. And so it seems very separate from, and it, and it has to be that way, at least for now, because the human life is very um, rigid. There's a lot of rigidity. There's many structures. You use the, um, we use the um, calendar time and, and, and it's very linear. And, and, and that is on purpose because there is an expiration date to the body and the mind together. And, and it is interesting how, isn't it interesting how, how in modern science with all the treatments and the advancements we've had, the body can live longer really in many ways than the mind. Many, many ways longer than the mind. So, okay, um, I, can I just take a second here and just take a breath? Mm-hmm. All right. So, so Dr. Hawking, you can call me Stephen, Bridget. <laughs> okay. So, so Stephen, so there's other planets that exist. So in spiritual context, there's lots of different types of planets that we know of. Cirrus, um, very connected with, from my vibe, how would I pick up on, very connected with Egyptian energies, like the Egyptian goddesses, the Egyptian gods, that kind of a thing. That's how I feel. Like I, goddess Isis, for example, very connected to that. 
kind of cat-like too. I feel very cat, divine feminine a bit. And then also divine masculine working together, but in like these animal, totem animal kind of vibes. That's what I see. That's what I see. Okay, you guys. Um, but like Cirrus and um, Arcturus and um, Pladia, Pladia, Pladian. I always say Pladian. That's probably not right. Pleiades. There we go. Pleiades. That's not my home home base. So I don't. I don't like. I'm not. I'm familiar. I work with a lot of people that are very Palladian energy and that star alignment kind of energy. They have some of that in their light body and their energy field and um, very compassionate. Most empaths have that understanding um, very, very much so. So I, I've, I've, I've had experience there uh, energetically with that civilization or culture, <laughs> why I say it that way. But I love the Arcturian energy, the very blue, tall pyramid, like I love that energy. All right, so those are the three I know of, that I personally know of. Um, I know that there's probably many, 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 many more. He says, oh yes. Oh, there's hundreds, there's hundreds, he says, hundreds. As many as the cultures and the countries of the world, there's, there's at least that many in, in the multiple universes. Yeah, yeah, he says, yeah, yeah, there's a lot, okay. All right, so is this something that we can access psychically then? Is that the only way that we can access it that we'll know about? these um, other, now, now, okay, so is this in our same timeline? No, that's a very good point, no. That's why it's confusing. That's why you're struggling with asking the question. So allow me to answer you before. <laughs> that would be just great. Telepathically, yes, the mind is involved as far as what you would consider psychically as the third eye or that vision place through imagery, yes. And, and so often it's depicted in scientific um, texts or television shows or stories and, and almost like folklore, that sci-fi. You know, that, that kind of a thing, your Star Trek, your Star Wars, well, maybe not Star Wars quite so much, but there are many other, and the, and the stories of time travel and things, yeah, so it has to do with time. That's what makes it seem confusing or other than, or like it's us and them, or it's um, easier just to think about, we have enough things to manage, enough topics and sources and, and experiences on Earth to manage that it, it seems, like that's enough so so this this timeline is definitely a piece and it is um it also speaks to the different realms or dimension so the way that the human mind would contextualize time as in it's five o'clock here 5 p.m here while in australia it's actually already another day time still seems to have a pattern an acceptable pattern of linearness of, of a of a straight line and of a specific beginning middle end or a start and, an, and a stop and and along those those, those parameters, it gives us opportunity as humans to connect with each other and in this like physical way. And, and yet the timelines don't, they're much more fluid when it comes to understanding outside of this earth atmosphere and, and the culture of human, the one culture of the human. It is hard to understand that outside of this, there are multiple um, timelines, which you could call dimensions, yes. So timelines and dimensions, very similar term, can be used interchangeably, yes, to validate that, yes, what you're, what you're saying. And then also this concept of reality is simply only where you are present in your focused attention. When your consciousness is present in a different timeline, a different dimension, that is a different reality, which is also happening concurrently. It's not um, as though you're the same person in 15 different places. You are the one mind in all of these at all moments. And you are just accessing the different variation or perspective. It, it's, you could say the same for opinions in the mind. It's the same kind of thing. It's not, it's not a physical experience, the alternate reality. It's not a physical as intangible, my hands are here, my body's here. It's more plays out like a memory, using imagery, using a feeling to, to create this awareness of, using the psychic flow of energy, the awareness of this other 
dimension. It is not an actual place, but it does have the characteristics of a place because you create it. And it is not just created by you, it's created by all the others that are like you that are uh, familiarized with that particular pocket of, pod of, or culture of. So the planet you mentioned, so you mentioned Arcturus, and you say that you have a feeling or, or an alignment with that. Describe to me what that is. Okay, okay, Stephen, I'm not being interviewed here. <laughs> He's like, we're having a conversation. Help, help me help your people, help your viewers, the, the people, help me help the people. He says, help me help the people. Um, entertain me, he says. <laughs> Tell me what Arcturus is. Well, it's very blue. It's very mm, scholarly almost collegiate, university-like. It's, it's a place where it's an it's a energy feeling place. I use that term place loosely, where there is a lot of healing. There's a lot of learning about healing. There's transfer of knowledge. It happens with the flow of energy. It's very light, light blue, almost neon blue. And um, when I see spirit guides from there, they're very tall and very almost like obelisk-like, but a little bit more pointed on the top. It doesn't. It definitely has a triangular um, viewpoint, and there's always multiple. There's always like three. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen just two. There's three or more. Three, five, seven, twelve, twenty-three, thirty-three. There's a lot. Yeah, there can be multiple, but um, that's how I see the spirit guides from there. And, and it feels just very educational, very um, university-like, very collegiate, like these are the teachers. And, and it feels very healing, very healing, um, kind of equated maybe to scientific studies of like telepathy and psychic abilities and all that kind of stuff like that, but that it's just real, like that's the science and that's just the, the, the realness. That's as, as normal as learning about business and marketing and, um, um, or um, as, as real as learning about um, drafting and that kind of a thing, you know, it's very, very real. That's how it feels to me. It feels like that. Hmm. And so the others who are sharing that same reality, that vision, that storyline, you might use the word storyline, but it's real as far as it is experienced through first the memory, the vision, and then in the collective understanding of what this means, the meaning of it, the purpose. There is underlying meaning or purpose, which is what connects, by the way, to that spirit that you consider like the, the, the chakra of that solar plexus that you talk about and, and the spirit of you, that part of you that is part of the oneness. It's that that connects to this. The meaning, the purpose, that's what creates this. The alternate realities are created from meaning and purpose that are collective, that are amplified, that are visualized, that are a common vision or belief. This is why people gather together in groups. They have common shared beliefs or values or common shared interests. It's the same thing. It's not that different, yet it's very ambiguous because it, it, we're, we're talking about things that are more like energy and the mind cannot understand that unless you're talking about electricity. Then you talk about currency or frequency or sound or light, things that are scientific, you can definitely make direct correlations. So the time, timelines, realities, dimensions, this is all the same. It's just not, um, it's like past, present, future is how it is. It's like, um, it's, it's like you choosing to believe something that you read or watched or studied based upon a collection of viewpoints from others and personal experiences that creates this choice to believe this. And yet there's a whole, a whole litany of others who in the same topic area or theme believe something completely different, if not opposite, which creates polarity, which creates what you consider this concept of duality. It does not have to be conflicted though. Duality and polarity can coexist, which is how you as a human being can be as a human being on the earthly plane and also be connected through spirit, energy, 
to these alternative realities or dimensions as you choose to. As you choose to. But you do have to access it through a different way than your human body. Your human body, you can't get on an airplane and go there. You have to access it through the energy or the channels of frequency, currency, information that you identify or can plug into. You can identify and plug into because that's something that is innate within your energy. This is hard to explain with the mind because it doesn't exist with the mind. It exists in spite of it. <laughs> it transcends it. And so there's not this choice that you need to make if you're gonna be, um, work with the observers or the aliens or the ETs. It's not about that. You are that. Most cases, you are that. You are part of that or have experienced that or been part of that in some way or someone very close to you has been has been and so it's not like this really foreign thing that you need to be afraid of there there should be this understanding and a curiosity but there should also be a discernment use that as as a very important factor in anything a discernment and the way that you feel using your intuition is quite quite valid it's quite valid it is a psychic thing that has been studied and there is evidence of, and so too then, you can connect and access. Okay, so I'm noticing my, I'm at 31, I'm gonna be over, I'm gonna have to cut this video in half, and oh, good gosh, oh, videos. Okay, Stephen, this is interesting. Now, we do have to go, I'm gonna keep going, cause now I'm already over, I'm already over 30 minutes, so I'm just gonna keep going hollering at my hubby in the other room because I told him I was going to channel quick and it's Saturday. I shouldn't say quick. I was going to channel Saturday. Um, so what about the governments and ETs and experiences with ETs? We need to talk about that. That's important, I think, because it's not only curious, it's Something that I think people feel like they don't trust the government because, oh, they're hiding things from us and that kind of a thing. So can you talk about this like Area 51 and all that kind of stuff? Can you talk about that? Like I personally try, like just like I stay away, I stay away from um, horror movies and, and also true crime and all that. I stay away from all that stuff because it's scary to me. I, it's, I feel it. I don't like it. I don't want to know about it. I have enough to focus on. <laughs> I don't need extra stress or drama. And so um, I don't know a lot about it. So can you tell us, like, I know Ro the, word, I know, um, the place in New Mexico, Roswell, and I know there's like this idea that the military did studies and that there were like UFOs that crashed and that there's been all these, there's been sightings throughout the many decades and going way back into like the 50s and all that. So can you shed any light on that for us? Well, of course there's information that's not shared. There are many classified things. And for whatever is considered the public good, could be public health and safety, as you are experiencing now with your, your, uh, Okay, don't say it because YouTube doesn't like that word. All right, with that, I'm gonna say health crisis, <clears throat> public safety is a very real thing, isn't it? And look at how much, how much uh, conflict comes from that and very different viewpoints. And in some cases, in your case, in the United States, violence and many things that are causing more rift and strife and struggle, just more separation, not togetherness. So now, perhaps, this is a perfect time to talk about um, um, intelligent life on other planets and extraterrestrial visits um, to the United States in particular, um, because that's where you're at. There's been other, um, and, and quite better relationships, I might say, um, in the Netherlands, out in Holland, um, the Scandinavian countries are a lot more friendly and, um, and dare I say, open-minded, even more than the Europeans. And... Um, the United States is probably the last on that list. There's not a whole lot of compassion or understanding. The U.S. doesn't have a lot of patience, and I'm sure you can agree with that. And so the fact that this could incite a great deal of fear, knowing that there have been, yes, government is very aware of other um, 
encounters with other aliens and other li life on other planets, intelligent life on other planets, um, it makes sense as to why it's not public knowledge. But looking back, would it have been better just to tell people at the time that it happened? Because I literally see people like, I literally see what looks like um, the Andy Griffith show, you guys, like Barney Fife, and, which is so funny because I just saw Don Knotts in an episode of a television show yesterday. I love him. He's so funny. Um, maybe we should channel him, actually. Mr. Burley, Three's Company. Okay, okay, okay. Back on track. But I see that like old police car, and I see kind of this like, 19, I don't know, early 50s vibe, that kind of, th I mean, I see way back in um, history that there were these experiences that were unexplainable. And, and at first it was just information gathering is what he's showing me, this information gathering, gathering data. And there was a crash. He's saying there was a crash. There actually was another, um, that's true, that's true, that did happen, and that there was a crash. And there... There are, okay, so are there treaties or agreements? Because it feels like there are, yes, there are. Understandings, he says, understandings. Treaties is probably the closest thing to understand. Agreements, yeah, treaties almost, yeah, it feels like that. But it's not for what you think. It's not, there's not a, 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 an ill will or a nefarious intent uh, with those that have been in contact with humans at least in the United States, the experience of the U.S., um, there has not been that. That has not been the case. There has not been a fight, good versus evil. There have been misunderstandings, for, sh for sure, um, related to the military, who are not privy to this information. The people you think know about this don't really know about this. Um, the, the people you think are, are in leadership positions or, or in high levels in the military that know about this, that you think, assume know about this, they don't know about this. Different people have different parts of the, the whole story. And really there is a library of information, but it's not as big as you think it is. It's not as much as you think it is. It's um, the people that need to know, know. And it's not a situation where you need to be worried or concerned. Um, it's, it's not like that. In fact, more people, more humans through psychic, um, he's showing me like a telepathy thing, can connect and communicate and do on a regular basis with life on other planets. So it's not this far out there strange thing that the government is keeping from you or that's being kept from you. You already know. So it's uh, kind of a situation where you're like, pot calling the kettle black kind of a thing. You're blaming somebody or using them as a scapegoat because you have your own fear about your own ability to tap into or channel or connect with alternate realities, other dimensions. Because you know you know very well, Bridget, that people are afraid of psychic abilities or, 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 or connections or what you what what is very commonly referred to as gifts. It's it's a very real part of a sensory part of your your light body or your body or energy body that is normal it is natural and if there's more understanding of this then you can access it but it does require transcending the mind and working with the one and that concept is very very big and it's not easy to be able to just accept that without letting the mind get too analytical or or, or involved in it and and that's what needs to happen there has to be this this kind of understanding within yourself, a treaty within your mind, uh, uh, clearly, to allow this to happen. So, so it's not something to be afraid of, is what you're saying, right? It's not something to be, no, it's not, it's not, well, it's not unknown. That's the thing. You act, it's, there's like this act like this, this big mystery and nobody knows the truth or the real facts. And as you've all seen in current events, everybody knows, but it's what you choose to believe. What do you choose to believe the intentions are? What do you choose to believe the purposes or the meaning? Everything boils down to the meaning, really. What does it mean for me? That's a human thing. What does it mean for me as, an, as what? What does it mean for you as what? As a body, as a human, as a mother, as, as a, um, a resident of a state, of a, of a taxpayer, of a, uh, whatever career you have, you know, it, it's like what identity, what does it mean to what identity? How will it change my life? How is it going to affect me? 
and you have to transcend that level of thinking in order to be free from the restriction or confines that don't allow you access to the other dimensional um, um, alternatives perhaps. And it's not that you choose to live in a different dimension. That's not a possible thing for you with the human body. If, it, if you choose that, you can see that in history. People have chosen that wherein they leave their body, which is their body still lives potentially, and maybe they're in a, a facility because their mind is not functioning any longer. Or perhaps they're in a medical state, like a comatose state, because their mind isn't part of the, because it's in a different place. The divine mind and the psychic mind have merged and there has been a conscious choice made from the human person body to release it. And that's a thing that isn't, it doesn't just magically happen and people don't just kind of go crazy or go insane or that kind of a thing. It is a conscious choice that is made somewhere along their life span. So being psychic doesn't make you crazy. And being crazy doesn't make you psychic. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Being crazy doesn't make you doesn't mean you're psychic. <laughs> Some of my favorite people are crazy people. I like it. Hey, being called crazy is not a bad thing. At least you're not boring. That's the way I look at it, right? All right. All right, Stephen, it's been great talking to you about aliens, life on other planets, this whole concept of kind of star energy, cosmic connections, you know, star guides, that kind of thing. We could still talk so much more about this. This is just fantastically fascinating to me. And so thank you so much for your time and for sharing in the way that only you can share. So viewers here at Above Life Channel, oh my gosh, what do you think? So what do you think about this whole concept of star seed? We didn't really get into it deeply here in this video, but I'm curious about if you have star guides or if you're aligned with other planet connections, if you have psychic connections in that way. If you're comfortable sharing that, sometimes you're not, just put, maybe then if you're not comfortable, just put a icon, a star icon in the comments, right? Just put a star icon if you know the vibes that I'm talking about here, okay? And if you want to say, if you are if you know what kind of affinity you have, like Arcturian or um, Palladian or Syria, uh, Syrian, that kind of thing, just go ahead and put that below if, if you want to, if you're comfortable. Otherwise, just put stars and that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Fascinating, right? Now, you guys, I am going to mention... This is a very intriguing topic and it might draw in a lot of different kinds of interests. So I'm going to remind you in the comment section below, as always, please be kind and know that people will come from different experiences, viewpoints and perspectives, and that's okay. As long as we're kind and we respect the space of others, <laughs> space of others, that's okay. That's okay here. So I'm Bridget. Thanks so much for watching Above Life channel on YouTube. I hope I've inspired your spirit with the help of our special guest today and filled you with some hope. I'm sure I got you curious. That's for sure. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Before you go, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.